Greetings. Welcome back to Modern Golf. I hope you're having a great day and better week. Recently, someone had asked me, um, how, what tips would you suggest for someone to break 100? Um, and so I've been thinking about this. I've talked to teaching pros that I know. Um, I play to about a seven-ish handicap, um, so I have some background in playing better. Um, and so I reach out to a lot of people I know in the industry to really kind of get the 10 slash 11 best tips without you going to buy new clubs and, and taking 45 lessons and spending 60 hours a week practicing. 10 things that we know will make you a much better player and help you break 100 right away. So these are in no particular order, um, but I think we're going to go in kind of sequential order and you'll understand what I mean here in a second, is the first thing that I think is the most important um, to helping break 100 is set a regiment of when you arrive to play. And so what I see is guys who I play with who struggle to break 100 um, or struggle to have break 90 um, is arriving pl with plenty of time to stretch, warm up, go through a routine to help you get focused so when you get to T1, um, you're ready to play. Um, I am pr predominantly get there about 30 to 45 minutes early. I don't hit a ton of golf balls. I'll hit maybe five to 10 golf balls. Literally, that's it to warm up. I stretch. Uh, I really focus on 20 yards and in, uh, certainly chipping around the green and putting. And we'll get into putting as well. But so for the first tip, I would say is set a regiment of when to arrive on a golf course and get your warm up set up within a certain time frame. The second thing, and, and I know I just said you're not going to take lessons, but I would start with a, a PGA teaching pro. And just for one simple reason, how's your hand alignment, how's your posture, how's, where's the placement of the golf ball, all those different things with alignment can really help change the way you play. So you don't have to book 50 lessons, but I would start with one and get maybe some of those things looked at and fixed. Sometimes it's just a hand placement. Maybe you're, you're your grip is very weak. Maybe it's too strong and you're hitting everything right to left. A lot of things, but spend your 45 or 75 bucks, whatever it costs for an hour lesson to get it looked, those things looked at, your posture, your swing plane, all those things, any PGA teaching pro can help you. You're not gonna be Tiger Woods tomorrow, but it'll certainly help you get on the right um, direction to help you break 100. So the next thing is going to have your loft and lies checked. And this is so crucial. Um, if, you, if you were playing old clubs, if you're playing new clubs, make sure they fit you. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying you have to go get all new clubs. Again, if you have a 25-year-old set of Titleist, whatever it is, but maybe they're six degrees upright or six degrees flat and you're hitting everything off the toe or you're hitting heel first into the ground, get that looked at. Also get your, your really, your lies, besides your lies looked at, your lofts looked at. Maybe your seven to eight iron almost have the same loft. And you'd be shocked at how many clubs, brand new or God forbid, 25 or 30 years old, have lofts that are very similar. So you're hitting your eight and seven iron within three or four yards um, difference. It also help you with the gapping as you play. So certainly get your lofts and lie check. And again, that's a really inexpensive thing. If you're playing eight or nine or 10 irons and the place I go charges, I think, three or four bucks a club. You're talking 40 or 50 bucks. It's well worth the money spent. The next one up is eliminate those high risk golf clubs in your bag. If you have a two iron in your bag or a 68 degree wedge in your bag, get rid of them. What we found and what I have found, the less clubs you play with, the better you'll play. It helps you shape shops, shape shots. It also helps you hit down uh, trajectory, higher trajectory, L really teaches you how to hit the golf ball better. But for those clubs that I call the miracle clubs, your 68 degree wedge, or even for the beginners, your driver, if you can hit a five wood or a three wood, 220 or 200 yards, start with that. Leave your driver at home, unless you're playing a, a, a very open par five or par four that you know you can't lose it out of bounds. I would eliminate all those high risk clubs. So the next thing is learn your miss. And so you talk to any really, really good player, and I have a lot of good friends are scratching above, plus handicaps. And what they'll tell you is they eliminate, they try to eliminate half the golf course. If it's left side or right side, um, it, it, golf is a funny game where 
a lot of people, you know, early on want to eliminate the right side. And I can tell you guys who've gotten better and who are better, sometimes a left, missing left is way more scary than missing right. But learn your miss. So if you're fading at 30 yards, yeah, aim a little bit left. But we just played yesterday with a great friend of mine, and he aimed so far left, and he's starting to figure out his game. And when he pulls it, he hits it dead straight. So don't aim 60 yards to the left. But if you know you hit a, a little cut fade or a fade, aim left, but try to work on coming inside out. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but certainly learn your miss. And so it'll help you, um, when you do miss, it'll help you, uh, eliminate some of those huge huge mistakes in high scores. One of the next things is, and you've heard me preach before, is use a better golf ball. And you're going to say, Jeff, it'll cost me $10,000 a year for golf balls. I'm not saying you have to go get Pro V1s or TP5X or the new Callaway balls tomorrow. But if you're buying nitro golf balls, where there's seven dozen for $19.99, Work your way up. Go play a Wilson Duo ball. Go play a Legato golf ball. That's an in-between, a $20 to $30 price point. You'll be shocked. Short game, 100 yards and in. You hit that green, it'll stop. When you're putting, it feels better. Better alignment. So don't always feel like the cheapest golf ball is your best option. Uh, and again, we talked about this before. If you're playing with your buddies, Ask them, hey, listen, when I'm within 150 yards, I'm going to switch out to a nicer golf ball, a lesser chance of you losing it. And I think it'll, it'll really help you break 100. One of the next things that I really try to tell everybody is walk more. And people say, I don't want to walk on a golf course. I, listen, I've got great friends I play with all the time that would rather be shot than walk 18 holes. And I understand that. But I can tell you, and there's been studies shown, that walkers are three to five strokes better than if they played the same course in a cart. It slows you down. It gives you better pace. You're not in a hurry to go hit the ball. You're not racing to everything. It really calms you down. And so I'm not saying walk every round you play, but something I've done, uh, if I'm not walking all 18, I'll try to walk the front nine to get into a better rhythm and then ride on the back nine if, if needed. Um, but definitely walk more. It will help you slow down, help you learn the topography of the golf course, and again, helps you kind of slow down your process of hitting a golf ball. Next thing is use tech to your advantage. Um, I'm in my 40s, so even if you're 80, or 18, use tech between your phone and things like Sky Caddy and um, laser range finders and everything, GPS on the cart. Have, use those for your advantage. I love my Sky Caddy for a million reasons, but one of the things I love is I learned to where to miss. And so if I'm playing a par five and it runs out at 290 and I say, oh, it's downhill, I can get it there, I'll take less club and hit a forward and vice versa if it's 220 to, to carry a ravine and 240 get the other side I learn but use technology to really help your scores if you know dangers you know 190 and you can't hit your driver over 180 then you're okay but you hit your driver 200 200 210 and that danger is running on 190 200 maybe you pull back and and not risk it and I can't tell you how many strokes you will save by just bracing technology there's a ton of free apps I know Apple watches have a bunch of things now but use technology to help you lower your scores we're getting near the end, so I, I appreciate uh, that we're getting here and I appreciate you hanging tight. The next thing I would say is work on, as important as hit your driver, I would spend 40 to 50% of your time just putting at your level. When you're around 110, 120, trying to break that 100, maybe you're right on it. When you warm up, practice putting. When you get on the green, don't BS around. Look on both sides of the hole. Really pay attention. Really focus on your speed and your stroke, and you'll be shocked on how quickly you can lower your scores just by becoming a better putter. And for nothing else, being a better lag putter, get it to three feet, get those two putts. Those three putts are killing you. Um, listen, they're killing me. They killed me yesterday. Um, had a great round going and three putted, I think, three holes on the last six. Um, my energy wasn't there, I wasn't focused, um, and I rushed through everything. So work on your putting, practice your putting, and you will definitely lower your scores and help you break 100. One other thing I want to tell you guys real quick um, is something I just talked about with a buddy yesterday when we were playing, 
is slow your swing down. And I'm not trying to be a teaching pro to you guys here, but what I notice with a lot of early golfers, they swing as hard and as fast as they can. Um, the best golfers I know, uh, guys who I play with who are plus three, plus four, um, guys who are teaching pro, guys who are on mini tours, um, they swing what seems to you fast, but very smooth, um, one, very repeatable, but it's not nearly as fast as you think. So I would say for one of the tips today is slow your swing down and you'll be shocked on what difference you'll get with the reaction between um, your swing plane, the path, uh, and certainly the way the ball comes off. Really one of the last two things I will say, um, one is we just kind of hit on it, is make sure you're nourished um, and hydrated. I know that sounds silly, that sound, I sound like your grandmother, but you'd be shocked on the focus, attention you lose when you're dehydrated or you're hungry. Um, my best rounds of my life, and I can tell you from 25 years ago till three weeks ago, when I'm super hydrated and eating throughout my round, I play a thousand times better. So I know people think it's comical, and I don't mean drink 45 beers, uh, but if you really stay hydrated and eat well and stay um, up and alert, your scores will definitely be better. Um, so def definitely uh, stay nursed and hydrated for sure. The last thing, well really I have two things left, but one of the last things I want to talk about is your pre-shot routine. And so I played yesterday and was behind a group um, and they all looked like they were about 50 handicaps. And I'm not trying to be belittle anybody, it's, it is what it is. What I noticed is not one of them had a pre-shot routine and they would hang over the ball forever. And so when I've learned, and I still take lessons to this day, um, the faster I can get in my pre-shot routine and get my waggle or my one practice swing in and go, the better I am. Hanging over the ball and taking 16 practice swings, or literally, I've just seen guys, I, I mean, they're over it trying to get a million swing thoughts in their brain. Um, you will learn as you play what your swing thoughts are. Uh, my personal ones are two things. Uh, I'm not saying my swing is perfect because it's by far nowhere near it, um, but is to keep my head still. Um, if I sway, uh, my club and ball and swing path go everywhere and then finish. So if I don't finish, I'm a, I'm a stabber at the ball. I hit down on it and I don't really finish. Those are kind of the two faults I have, so I try to really work on that. But as you go, you'll learn your swing thoughts, and, but, but create a pre-shot routine. Whatever it is, you're aiming for a spot, whatever you're doing, create a pre-shot routine to help you lower your scores and certainly break the 100. The last thing I'm gonna hit on real quick is we talked about eliminating certain clubs out of your bag. Um, I would say if you can't hit your driver 220, 230 and straight, don't even hit it. Again, unless it's in a wide open space on a par four or par five, um, eliminate it. Use a five wood, use a three wood, probably a five wood's even better. Hit it your 180, 190. You'll be shocked at how quickly your scores come down and down and down. So anyway guys, I hope you're doing great. I just wanna kinda of go over 10 or 11 things that I've talked to teaching pros as well as what I've learned in my life to help those guys who have a hard time breaking 100. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're new here, please subscribe, please like. Uh, again, you can always go to our website, moderngolf, M-O-D-R-N, golf.com for all of our videos. Certainly, if you're on YouTube, you can see them all here as well. Uh, but if there's anything you would like to see, let us know. Um, we will try to get that done for you, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.